This video is about skydiving and um, skydiving is not particularly a straightforward topic to explain because you have to be very specific about what you are discussing. Whether you are talking about the forces involved in skydiving, the changes in speed or the changes in velocity, the changes in acceleration or whether you're talking about energy transfers. So um, when we talk about skydiving, we broadly think about five key stages of a skydive. So first of all, we have like the moment you jump out of the plane, right? So literally the moment you've just jumped out of the, uh, out of the side of the plane, it's that moment where you're effectively stationary for like a split second. So the instant you jump out of the plane. Then we have a little bit of time later as you're starting to fall. Then we have a little bit more time later as you've been falling for a little while. Then we have the moment you open the parachute and then we have the moments just before you hit the ground. Now when you are describing any skydiving question, uh, the two forces you must always talk about are the weight and the drag. So when we talk about the weight, we are talking about the force due to gravity, and that is gonna be constant throughout the entire process because your weight can't change. The thing that is gonna change is your drag, okay, which is affected by speed. So at the moment you jump out of the plane, the only force acting on you, because you're not moving, is your weight. Okay, so the resultant force at this point is just going to be downwards, and the resultant force is going to be equal to the weight, uh, which is the force due to gravity. The reason being, there is no drag force at this point, because you're not moving, you don't have a speed. Obviously, from here to there, you are speeding up, okay? So from here to there, your speed as you fall is increasing. Okay, in other words, you are accelerating. Okay, so you are accelerating uh, in that first stage. Okay, now as you get to stage number two, you fall a little bit because you are now falling with a little bit of a higher speed. Drag is directly proportional to the speed squared. So what will happen is your weight will still be the same, but your drag has now started to increase. So the resultant force is still downwards, but it's smaller, okay? Um, so it's not quite equal to your weight anymore. And this will keep happening until we reach stage number three, where your drag will keep increasing until it is equal opposite to your weight. So you have your weight at this point, the resultant force at this stage is equal to zero because the drag is equal to the weight. Okay, We describe this point okay, um, as the terminal velocity and the terminal velocity means that at this point your speed or velocity is constant. You can also say it's a maximum because it's not going to increase anymore because, uh, because the drag is now equal to your weight. So you reach terminal velocity, your speed is constant at this stage. So in terms of what is happening here, if you look at the force, when we start off we have the biggest resultant force. So our acceleration in that first stage is going to be equal to 9.81, okay, which is the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. That's going to be the acceleration at that point, the moment you leave the aeroplane. A little bit of time later, because the drag force is starting to increase, the resultant force is less. And so your speed is increasing, but at a decreasing rate. So you're speeding up this entire time but not by as much. So in other words, from here to there, you are accelerating, but your acceleration is decreasing. Until we reach stage number three, when we're at terminal velocity, where the acceleration is zero. The resultant force is zero, the acceleration must be zero. So you start off with an acceleration of 9.81, and your acceleration decreases until it reaches zero, when you reach terminal velocity. Um, 
when we get to the next stage, what we're now doing is we're exploiting the fact that drag is also directly proportional to area. And so when we open our parachute, our weight is still exactly the same. But now we're going to massively increase our drag force. And so our resultant force at this stage is now upwards as a result of the increase in drag. Now, to be clear, this does not mean that the skydiver is going to move upwards. They are still falling downwards. The fact that their resultant force is upwards means they are going to decelerate. Okay, their speed is going to slow down, right? So they're going to experience deceleration. In other words, their speed will decrease because there is a much bigger drag force. Now, going back to this relationship, because drag is directly proportional to speed squared, because the speed is decreasing as you fall to here, the drag will decrease. So just before you hit the ground, your weight is still the same, and your drag will have decreased until we reach a point where we have a resultant force equal to zero. The drag is equal to the weight again, but with a much slower speed than the previous term velocity because of the increased area uh, causing you to be able to go slower. Okay, So the speed is decreasing, right? Uh, and as it's falling here, the speed is decreasing, but at a decreasing rate. In other words, the skydiver is decelerating, but the deceleration is decreasing. So he's getting slower, but the rate at which he's getting slower is getting less and less as time goes on until he reaches this point of terminal velocity again when the acceleration is back to zero and you have a new, much slower terminal velocity. So in summary of the bits that we've took covered, so as we jump out of our aeroplane, the force that is acting on us, the only force that's on us is the weight. So that causes us to accelerate downwards at a rate of 9.81, which is the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. Because we are accelerating, our speed starts to increase. As our speed increases, because speed is directly proportional to drag, uh, or the drag is directly proportional to speed squared, and as our drag increases, the resultant force begins to decrease. So it's important to understand that from here to there, the resultant force is decreasing. Obviously, until it reaches this point, when the resultant force is zero. And what that causes to happen, because the resultant force is decreasing, the acceleration is decreasing until the acceleration reaches zero at the point we call terminal velocity, which is when the weight is equal to the drag. As you keep falling at this point, you'll be falling at terminal velocity at constant speed until you open your parachute and you increase your drag force by increasing your area. And so that will cause a resultant force now upwards because the drag force will increase, which will cause you to decelerate. So your speed will decrease. But because your speed is decreasing, okay, from here to there, your drag will decrease. So from this position, so between these two stages, the drag force is decreasing. And therefore the resultant force again, just like before, is decreasing. Um, and so your speed decreases, but at a decreasing rate. You are decelerating, you are slowing down, but by less and less at each, each second, until you reach a point where you are at a new terminal velocity, your weight is equal to your drag again, you have a new terminal, terminal velocity, and your acceleration is zero. The last thing to think about with this um, other than the forces, the acceleration of velocity is the energy. So ultimately, when you are high up, you have a great amount of gravitational potential energy. That is going to be converted into kinetic energy as you're falling, right? Because you're going to be getting faster and faster as your speed increases. So remember, kinetic energy is 
equal to half mv squared. Your mass will be constant, but your speed is increasing, so your kinetic energy increases. So your gravitational potential energy is converted into kinetic. When you reach terminal velocity, your speed is no longer increasing. So at this point, your kinetic energy must be constant. And so, but that, you're still losing gravitational potential energy because you're still falling. So at this point, uh, since your kinetic energy is constant, right, the remaining energy is instead being turned into thermal or heat energy uh, to heat up the air around you. Obviously, when you slow down from here, your kinetic energy will be decreasing as your speed increases, but your gravitational potential energy is still decreasing because you're still falling. So even though your speed is getting slower, the remaining gravitational potential energy is still getting converted into heat energy. And when you reach terminal velocity again, it will be the same. Any excess energy is being converted into kinetic. So when you're explaining skydiving, make sure you're really clear about the fact that, depending on the question, whether you're talking about what is happening to the force, what is happening to the velocity, what is happening to the acceleration, they are all different. And you must make sure you can clearly articulate each one. Um, and then also be able to articulate what is happening in terms of energy transfer as you are falling.